stored procedures. Okay, what is stored procedure in SQL Server? And why do we need to use stored procedure? And um, I'll show you some uh, scenarios, right? Uh, how you can use the stored procedure, okay? Uh, what is a stored procedure, first of all? This is very common in almost all the RDBMS. It is not specific to SQL Server. It is a pre-compiled collection of SQL statements, okay? So it is, a um, you know, um, the stored procedure in SQL Server is prepared SQL. You can execute it repeatedly by calling the procedure name, okay? It's something like create once, use it as many times as you want. It's something like, um, what is that, ready mix. You want to prepare, prepare your favorite dish, you don't have to go and buy, order each and every ingredient to prepare the dish. You don't have to, even after ordering it, you have to mix it with the proper ratio. And then only you need to, uh, you will be in a position to cook, right? But with ready mix, you don't have to buy each and every ingredient. You don't have to mix everything, the proper ratio, everything, right? Everything is done automatically. You need to buy it and then you're all set. You need to go and cook it. Right. So the same way, once you create a stored procedure, you can reuse it as many times as you want it. Okay. So this is your, re, you know, with the stored procedure, you can create uh, reusable components. What scenarios we can create the reusable components? I will give you some examples. See, first of all, what exactly stored procedure is all about? Instead of writing the SQL queries one after the other, right, we combine all the uh, the SQL statements in a single stored procedure. We are going to package everything in a single stored procedure so that uh, you can perform a set of, uh, you know, batch related tasks to uh, meet some uh, or meet specific functionality, okay? So the whole, um, you know, the objective of this one is uh, you can call it as many times as you want it uh, once you create it, okay? Uh, but uh, the stored procedure will get stored in your database. This is the thing you need to remember it. And also it is a pre-compiled and pre-optimized piece of code. Hence, every time you don't, you know, the SQL server need not to, you know, compile your SQL query. Once you package all the queries in your SQL server, uh, stored procedure, uh, and once you execute it, it, it is getting uh, pre-compiled and pre-optimized. Each and every time when you call it, it will not get compiled, okay? You don't have to optimize it each and every time. That is the whole idea of using stored procedure. Here is the syntax for the stored procedure. Create procedure, procedure name, and the parameter. Okay, so here the parameter name should be prefixed with at symbol. And followed by the parameter name, you can spell the data type. And uh, followed by the data type, you can spell the equal sign and the default values. Okay, and create procedure, procedure name, parameters, and uh, as. This is a reserved word. And begin all the caps, uppercase, letters or reserved word. This is where your body will start. This is where you can write all your business logic, okay? So now what I will do is I'll just uh, directly jump into SQL Server. Look here, here is my um, SQL SSMS. I just expand the thing here. Here I will just show you retail analytics. So here, um, okay, I just... Um, Start with a simple example to give you an idea of uh, what exactly this one is all about. Okay. One single, let me just uh, show you this one. It requires a sales table. Okay. One second.
product sales amount region here uh, yeah sales underscore amount correct the same uh, table i used it in the short version okay to so, you know start with a you know i'm going to create a simple uh, stored pager so that um, you know you, you will get a quick sense of what exactly a stored pager is all about i start with uh, creating a stored pager how to create a stored pager create procedure and then give whatever name you want it. For example, get all employee. This is my stored pager name as this is syntax, right? This is the syntax for creating your stored pager as begin and end. And next one is begin and end here. And uh, within this begin and this is where your body. Here, what I do is select star from, for example, you have something called select star from employee table that's all okay here if i execute this one look here a stored posture got created commands completed successfully very good so okay creating the stored posture is not sufficient you need to use it isn't it how do i use this stored posture how do i invoke this stored posture we have a command called exec the short form of execute is exec okay usually we use execute and uh, but usually we use exec but uh, the actual uh, expansion for exec is execute get all m okay execute this stored procedure what will this is a reserved word this is your stored procedure name all you have to do is for example this is a stored procedure you created it and all your team member you tell them hey guys this is a stored procedure that is available all you need just to be the employee table you don't have to write select star from employee Instead, just write, uh, you know, uh, exec followed by this, you need to specify my stored position. That's all. If they execute it, look here, the body of this stored position gets executed and then output, you can see it here. So once you create it, it will get stored in a database. You need to call it. You need to use this one. So for that, we use a technical term, call the stored, how to call the stored position, exec followed by stored position. That's all, right? So all your team members, simply they can, execute these two words they need to select these two words and click on execute that's all they don't write select star from employee similarly see in this case select star from employee if you have to join more than one table or three or four tables five tables and eight tables and you know, join everything left join uh, let's you know first two tables you do left join and the output of that one you use it to create uh, you know you perform the right outer join and so on okay you want to perform right outer join and so on okay and then uh, with that output maybe you may be doing inner join with other set of tables very complex logic you implemented it so all the end user they have to do just simply they don't have to be aware of uh, the complex logic whatever you have implemented it usually we should be as a developer you should be able to understand the logic but there are cases you don't have to understand all the logic simply call the pro stored pager Fine, calling the stored pager is everything is fine, but I don't want to see all the records. I want to see based on some condition, only I want to see certain rows. How can I do that? So for that, you can use some parameter. How to use parameter? See here, in the syntax, add parameter one, right? This is your uh, thing. Yes, uh, Soundarya, uh, learning the SQL server is very, very important. See, in the real world scenario, only for namesake, we are using Power BI because we are hitting the source system data warehouse. The volume of data is very huge. Obviously, we are using direct query mode. Direct query mode, you know very well, we cannot do anything, right? Literally, we do very minimal transaction we do. That is not going to be helpful. Hence, implement all your complex logic in your, sort, uh, in your SQL server itself. Usually, we use the sort procedure uh, or... Uh, the stored function to implement all the complex logics okay so okay all numbers for example i'm going to create another stored version and here what is the syntax for parameter add parameter so the parameters are helpful to make your code more dynamic num1 and uh, int comma at um, num2 int data type and uh, as begin in So here, I just say, you know, select um, at uh, num1 plus at uh, num2. 
as sum of numbers. That's all. So why do I need to use the stored procedure here? Sorry, the parameter here. You can give whatever the name that you wanted. If you say 5, 10 here, when you execute the stored procedure, only 5, 10 will get, we will, 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 only that value will be used. Instead, use some generic name. Okay, num1, num2, that's a parameter. Now my stored procedure got created. Okay, how do I execute the stored procedure this time? Same thing, execute. And then your stored procedure name. Followed by that, you need to specify the stored procedure name, okay? And uh, followed by this, in this case, since we are using parameter, if you simply execute the stored procedure, it will not work, it will throw an error. You need to pass some values to these parameters, okay? You see here, all my expects parameter at num, num1, which was not supplied. You need to send some values. For example, 10, comma, sorry, 10, comma, 20. In this case, what will happen? This 10 will get copied to at num1, 20 will get copied to num at num2. So here the 10 plus 20 is 30. Okay, that is what it is. So here you need to give in the proper. This 10 will get copied to the first parameter. This 20, the second one will get copied to the at num2. That's all. So now you understood with this simple example how to create a stored version and uh, what is the advantage of stored procedure? Create once and you can execute it as many times as you. You can use it as many times as you want it. And similarly here, in this case, how to define a parameter and then um, how to, what is the advantage of parameter? We see here 20, 10 comma 20. Later time, if you want to pass 100 comma 200 or 500 comma 1 lakh or 100 lakh, whatever value you want it, you can pass it that value will get copied to this one and then it does the you know the addition right so in this case when we use at num1 and at num2 this is the parameter name. Uh, the, the the purpose of this parameter we can make our stored budget very dynamic you can pass whatever value you wanted okay but you can pass only two values because you are using only two parameters at num1 and at num2 hence you need to pass only two values for this parameter if you specify single value also, it will not work. It will throw an error, okay? And if you are using two parameters, make sure that you are passing uh, in values for two parameters. Otherwise, it will not work. <clears throat> oh, okay, your question is, how do I, you know, show me the parameter with uh, this one, right? Okay, okay. I will show you that one also. Don't worry. The same thing, I just copy paste it. For example, create uh, procedure, get employee, get all employee name only, okay? Uh, get all M for name. In this case, uh, you know, I just want to use uh, at uh, M underscore ID integer. Okay, so parameter. This time I'm using a parameter here. And here, uh, let me do one thing. If I exit, what values are there? Higher rate, salary, commission, everything. Okay, here we don't have that one. Okay. So I mean, here I'm going to use var amp uh, id. Uh, imp, imp ID, uh, what is that? Imp number, where imp number is equivalent to at imp ID. So if you give like this, and here, this is how you can pass the value. This is how you can execute the short measure. Here, for example, these are the existing thing. For example, you want to give only the specific employee related data. Uh, eight, uh, so 7782. Select start from employee. Okay, all the columns. Okay, I'm going to create the stored procedure. Yes, stored procedure got created. Get all imp name and followed by that the employee ID 778 I have given it and execute. Look here. If you want to view only the specific record, uh, you know, you can use this one, right? Again, you can use uh, and uh, employee number equal to at amp ID. You can use more than one parameter. For example, you want to check salaries. Those employees are getting salary is greater than something. In that case, you don't have to use the employee ID. Use uh, at, uh, you know, the M underscore. So some, you know, name for the parameter, you can give it. 
And um, that parameter, if you pass, where salary is greater than this salary. So in that case, if you specify here, what are the salary that you specified here? So beyond uh, more than that one will get displayed. Those employees are getting salary greater than this value it will display. In this case, instead of salary, I've used employee ID. Understood, right? This is how we can dynamically query your uh, stored procedure. Oh, sorry, you can dynamically query your uh, employee table, okay? Next one is I will give you another commonly used uh, scenario. For example, we have a sales table and we want to understand uh, how to use uh, the, so the common one is, for example, you want to find out the fine number summary. Mm, let me just check, uh, yeah, select store from sales. Here we don't have order date column, okay. Mm. Total sales, okay. For, okay, for example, I'm going to use this stored procedure. This is my sales table. We want to display the fine number summary, like um, minimum sale, maximum sale, average sales, or let's take you know only these four values. In this case, we don't need this one, and because we don't have that column. And here, yeah, sales amount and uh, these are the things. Okay, and uh, here I'm going to use something like um, yeah, return the sales amount. Okay, here what it does, it computes the sum, total sales amount, or a sales amount. And similarly, you can find out here the where condition is not required because if you want, you know, where condition, we have to use where condition. For the sake of demonstration, I'm going to remit because we don't have the order date, uh, start date and all, it is not there. Uh, and so I'm going to remove it. And minimum, maximum, right, all the things. Here I have used this one. I'm going to remove this one because we don't have the date and all. And here I'm going to use this one. I execute this one. Yes, the store procedure got executed. And here what I do is get sales summary. Here all you need is if you give this one to someone else, they can see the total sales, average sales, max sales, min sales. They don't have to run these queries, right? All the queries you put it uh, in this begin end. And why do I need to use uh, declare here? Yes, in this case, and each query, if you see here, the total sales, sum of sales amount, you are getting stored in a variable called total sales, right? And average sales, uh, to store the average of the sales amount, we have uh, aggregation function on average that you store in the same way, minimum, maximum, we are doing it. And finally, we are combining all the parameter values. Then we are giving meaningful column name. And then we are creating the stored version. We are done it. You know, execute. Finally, once you create this one, this many lines of code is there. Now, what you do is you tell your team member, say, guys, I have created a stored version, reusable component. You don't have to count the minimum, maximum, average sales, total sales. All you need to do is just execute my storage version. It will give you these five different minimum, maximum, average, totals. Everything it will be given. It will give. Okay. Got it? So this is what uh, the situation we use the stored budget. Apart from this, for example, you want to compute the um, net salary. Okay, you want to compute the net salary. Same logic. Here, uh, procedure name and procedure name. And uh, here I declare two parameters. Declare the parameter name can be anything, but it should be prefixed with at symbol. Followed by that, you can specify the data type. And in this case, I have used the output. So in the case of stored procedure, you can give input parameter. So far, we discussed about the parameter wherever, right? It is all uh, the input parameter. So in this case, there are no parameters we used it. Whereas um, in this case, I've used the parameter, right? And uh, here, the followed by the parameter, means to specify the data type. This is called your input parameter. This is called your output parameter. The output parameter also the same way how you define the input parameter, but at the end of it, you need to specify output, okay? 
now what we do is uh, we want to output the net salary. We want to compute the net salary. And then we do. So we know, so again, uh, inside the body, we can declare the variable, uh, you know, at uh, tax rate, all the things we, you know, create it here. But the declare followed by whatever is that is called your variable. Okay. This is called your parameter. This is called your variable. Um, and here, if the gross salary is less than 50,000, and uh, here, right, what are the value you pass it? For example, if you pass this uh, 1 lakh rupees as a gross salary, or let's say if you pass the, the gross salary is 48,000, the condition will come here. Okay, if the salary is, uh, you know, 1 lakh or less than 1 lakh, point to tax will get deducted 20 percentage, right? The rest of them, point three zero. Those people get more than 10 lakh, they fall in this bucket, the tax rate. That's all, guys. I just uh, execute the stored procedure. The procedure got executed without any error. And if any error comes, how do I troubleshoot? Google. Check with Google. It's that much simple. Okay. Use your common sense, read the error, and uh, make sure that you do not make any typo. It's a case sensitive. For example, you are you have declared the net uh, capital N and uh, capital S for the net salary. And if you use all capital letter here or all small letter, then the capital letter and small letter is different. Okay. And how do I call the store store because in this case here, since I'm using uh, the net cell as an output, we need to before call the stored budget, you need to create a you know a variable uh, and using declare. Okay, how do you define a variable in SQL Server? They'll ask in the interview. Declare followed by the variable, and followed by that, you can you need to specify the data type. In this case, is decimal. And here I'm just calling the stored budget execute um, calculate salary, net salary, and followed by that. For these two parameters, look here, the parameter name, I specified it explicitly, followed by that, I have given 50,000, okay, and followed by net salary is equivalent to this net salary, right, so this net salary, on the left side, whatever you have is nothing but this net salary is equivalent to the net salary returned by this stored procedure. See here, the net salary, final net salary, it is computed here, that net salary will get assigned here as an output and finally when you select the at net salary that value will get displayed okay this is a little bit different okay you can even watch my pre-recorded video so i've discussed more detail like how i discussed now okay but that is more more detailed one got it so in stored closer you can use input parameter as well as output parameter uh, the stored pressure can, you know, with stored pressure, you can return more than one parameter value also as an output, okay? Whereas uh, in the case of uh, stored function, we have something else called the stored function. The same thing using stored function also, also we can do it. Instead of using procedure, you need to specify function. That's all, guys, okay? And then there's, you know, slight syntax differences there. If you see here, uh, you need to use uh, the return variable. The function will, the function has to return a variable. Not necessarily always, okay. But the whole idea of function is you have to return a value, okay. And here, return the data type, okay. And, you know, you need to specify this explicitly. So, these are reserved word, okay. Returns all the upper case are reserved word. And this is my own variable, okay. This parameter, okay. And declare text rate, everything. The rest are all same, the logic. Same as my stored procedure. Instead of using stored procedure, you can create the stored function also. But the, remember that the stored function, so you know this is a stored function because it gets stored in your, um, it is already there. I just uh, use some other name and uh, I'll exit. Look here, the stored procedure got, function got executed. And then how do I call the stored function here? You need to call this function, okay? Calculate net salary one. Select uh, at, yeah, sorry, select calculate salary one. At uh, net, at gross salary, right? Uh, yeah, you need to pass the gross salary here. Yes, gross salary. Simply you can copy it and paste it so that you can avoid uh, the typo and all, okay? I just remove this. Gross salary is equivalent to, let's say you are getting one lakh rupees. So one lakh, the condition will come here, right? It will 
multiply the 1 lakh by 0 0.2 and then it will subtract this one uh, for a, your gross salary, right? 20 percentage of tax amount will get deducted from your gross salary, okay? If I execute this one, uh, incorrect syntax in your at gross salary equal to, okay, okay, here, in this case, you need to specify like this, okay? Mm, it's not a recognized built-in function in calculate. One second, have I created this store? But yes, I created it. Right, one second, let me just check. Uh, yeah, this is already is there, no error, nothing. And uh, one second here, we calculate one. Um, only thing is, uh, you should know how to uh, the syntax is a um, little bit different here. So you can use a select query uh, to execute a call, a, you know, a stored function, okay? So here uh, you can use select statement to call a stored function. Okay, here the problem is, yeah, you can specify it directly here. Or else what we'll do is, um, yeah. Declare, we can use declare. Declare at um, gross salary. Instead of giving it as a 10, you know, 1 lakh directly. Here you can give it like this, okay. And here you can search simply the gross salary, okay. Simply you can select it and it should work. And here you need to specify whether it is an integer or a, let's say an integer or decimal, okay. Decimal, uh, let's say 18, comma 2 or something like that, okay. Yeah, so here uh, you need to prefix with uh, some DBO, okay, database uh, object owner, okay. That's all, that's the only thing. Otherwise, it will it will get it. Look here, it got executed. Only thing is, just before the stored procedure name, sorry, stored function name, you need to use DBO, that's all. So the way how to call the uh, stored procedure is somewhat similar to these, uh, you know, calling the stored function, okay. But here we can use the select statement. Using the select statement, you can specify followed by selection. You can specify the stored version name, and inside this, you can specify the um, parameter name. But the parameter name already declared is 10,000. So, okay, your question is can't I give directly one lakh? Yeah, this is 10,000. One second, is this what your doubt? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, the previously it was showing error because I did not prefix it. You can directly specify it like this. One lakh instead of defining a variable and all right, this step is not required, but still that is the formal way that we use it. Okay, this is the proper way we use it, but make sure that your uh, stored procedure name, uh, stored function name is prefixed with DBO in the case of stored function, otherwise it is seen. Okay, yes, I will share the script, that's the reason why I'm just putting it everything here. Okay, don't worry, and now we have understood what is stored pressure and what is uh, stored function. What is the difference between these two, stored pressure and stored function? In the interview, they will ask you, what is the difference between, which one should I use it? Uh, it depends on the situation, okay? Uh, in the, both the cases, uh, stored pressure or stored function, both of them get stored in your database. There is no doubt, okay? Uh, if you want to perform any um, actions, data manipulation, complex business logic, that time you can use stored pressure. Uh, and also in the case of stored function, right, um, if you want to calculate and return a single value based on some input parameter, in the previous case we have seen it, the single parameter was gross salary, right? So if you want to return uh, the output uh, for, uh, you know, as a, if you want to return a single value in that kind of stored function, uh, stored function can return only one value. If you see here, the return statement should be there in your stored function, okay? 
and what other difference um using exec command we can execute the short version whereas uh, the functions you can reference it within your sql queries okay that is what we did it right i select uh, the stored version name that is what it did and uh, you can uh, use the stored version uh, you, you can call the stored version independently from other stored pages can i call a stored pager from another stored pager yes that is possible triggers you can call a stored pager from other stored pager or uh, triggers and other application could also you can call it whereas in the case of um, stored function they can be used in column values uh, like uh, here so in this case the column values right uh, we select Followed by the column values. So instead of column name, I just specified the short function name. Inside this, I specified the parameter name. That's all. And you like uh, stored procedure, you can you can like a stored procedure. You can call a stored procedure inside another stored procedure, and you can call a stored procedure from a trigger. Same way, you can uh, do it for the stored function also. You can make the stored function as part of uh, other function. Or also, you can use the stored function as part of your stored procedure itself, and triggers also you can use the stored function. These are the difference as exists between the stored procedure and stored function. So this wraps up 